What the heck is the blood type? Once upon a time, I was in med school, sitting in class, learning about blood, but daydreaming about Pokemon. From the corner of my ear, I heard the lecturer use the phrase, blood types, and my brain immediately thought, oh, that sounds like an interesting type for Pokemon. Let's make some. What's cracking, YouTube? My name is Neck Punch, and welcome back to In Defense of New Types. Today, we're looking at the brutal, disgusting blood type, and the niche that I think it could fill in Pokemon. Blood type could be summarized in one word. Brutal. It was basically a combination of dark, fighting, and poison type. Or, at least, it was. Now, it's absolutely okay to just say, the games don't need this, I just want it. In fact, that's pretty much my whole approach to Fegmon design. With the blood type, it was just interesting. It pushed my creativity to think of new things. As soon as I entertained the idea of blood type Pokemon, I came up with funny but cool ideas like Vasculin and Rockadia. But as time passed, I wanted to come up with something for blood type that made it more than just a dumb play on words and set it apart from fighting poison and dark. The idea came to me when I was watching Loxton's videos about dragon and fairy types. Yes, I've already referenced these in my video about the light type and today I'm expanding on it further. In a nutshell, his idea is that fairy and dragon both represent two sides of nature magic. Dragon moves rip it from its source in a raw, uncontrolled fashion, and fairy types are embodiments of the same energy, hence being immune to the raw, uncontrolled version of themselves. I applied the same logic to light and dark types as two sides of a hypothetical spiritual energy. Dark is raw, uncontrolled spiritual power, and light is the pure embodiment of that same energy energy. In that video I explain in more detail why that's light and not fairy. But now, we expand it further by applying the same idea to another type of power, physicality. The blood type represents raw, uncontrolled physicality. On the other hand, the fighting type represents the pure, focused, disciplined embodiment of that same power. That's what martial arts are generally all about. So in my game, fighting and blood will be two sides of that physicality coin. That means fighting is immune to blood. Now some will take issue with that. I've seen other users of this fake type have blood be super effective against fighting. But I think of it like this. Imagine two fighters of equal strength and weapon skill, but one is focused and disciplined and the other is enraged, driven by emotion. The latter is likely to make mistakes and telegraph every move such that the focused soldier dodges everything. Generally, the blood type is going to lose. Now that might sound like blood type is just fighting type but worse, but there'd be some upsides to being blood type. One would be that blood type is a great candidate for a type that could balance out the overpowered water type. After all, blood is thicker than water. Also, if blood types represent this raw, undisciplined emotional fighting, then they're going to be more vulnerable. Every hit that lands basically hits a weak spot. And what do we call getting hit in a weak spot in Pokemon? A critical hit. So every move against a blood type is a crit. But if everything's a crit, nothing's a crit. That's right, blood types are immune to crits. Now, of course, types are rarely just one thing, so to flesh out the type, <laughs> it incorporates elements of other fake types out there like beast type and chaos type. And I'm still folding in the idea of Pokemon based on or using blood, guts, and gore. And before you say Game Freak would never actually do a Pokemon based on Viscera, may I remind you that it was only three generations in that we got Pokemon literally based on disembodied stomachs. I rest my case. So, of course, if Blood Type was real, Gulpin and Swalot would 100% receive it. I also think the Timber line is a good candidate. Game Freak intentionally avoided typing them according to what they hold, since their power comes from their bodies, not their weapons. They're pretty muscular, but they're also pretty darn vascular. If there's one thing women love, it's a vascular man definitely could be fighting in blood types. Mankey and Primate would also be part blood type. Talk about raw, uncontrolled physicality. Primate literally gets so angry they sometimes die. That there is the line where someone crosses from being just an aggressive fighting type to a brutal blood type. As for Annihilate, I think it could remain as is. The deck says Primate looks peaceful in death, and to me, Annihilate looks more tired than angry, like someone who's lived a life of violence and is just too tired to cling onto that rage any longer. Still fighting type, but swapping out blood for ghost as it moves on. Of course, once again, these examples reinforce the point that more types leads to more diversity and makes things more interesting. Gen 1 gave us four separate fully evolved 
pure fighting types. Gen 5 gave us four more. Both times, one of those pure fighting types could have been something more interesting. And how many pure poison types are there? You might think blood type is dumb, but you can't tell me Swallot would be less interesting as a unique type combination. As for me, the blood type has inspired a lot of ideas, as many of you already know. I already mentioned Vasculin, the evolution of Basculin, and Rocardia based on calcification of the heart and the phrase heart of stone. Scarcity of food in Cotain has also brought out Puciana and Mightyena's more brutal streak, creating this regional variant, and Southern Cotain's big bloody meat swamp is home to the leech Pokemon Suckling and Succium, as well as the Cotain Bellsprout line, which don't just eat bugs anymore, and the Phlebottle line. On the note of mosquitoes, I guess Buzzwall would also be blood type if that type was real, but I want Ultra Beasts to be brand new types, unique to Ultra Space. That's a conversation for another day. Take a Burmy to the swamp and it'll come out looking like this, and then evolve into this. Shout out to Dead Bedspread for inspiring that monstrosity. There are also the Tentacle that got washed in by Flood, stranded and turned into mushrooms. Still debating whether this should be a variant or like a toad scroll thing. I could call them Denticle and Denticruel. Elotox's blood form actually gets its typing not because of its habitat, but because of the effect a Taipan's venom has on the blood. Bluncheon is based on a spectral bat. What's up? What? Oh, hey, Bludgeon. No, sorry, I said Bluncheon, as in like blunt object plus luncheon, plus I guess also Bludgeon. It's a bat Pokemon that hides in the roof of caves, bludgeons Woobat and Swoobat with its blunt hands and feet and eats them for lunch. Oh, right, sorry. <laughs> That's pretty clever, actually. Actually, whilst you're here, you made some pretty awesome blood types last year. Uh, how would you feel about Avatorn being catchable in Cotayan? Oh, dude, go ahead. You're already using my Reggies, so uh, yeah, help yourself. Awesome, thank you. Okay, so check out Bludgeon's video for the lore behind Avatorn. Now, next up is... Oh, right, I better go. Sorry. Pentart was based on an ex-girlfriend and a disturbed song. The Sangui... Also, Neck is allowed because he's my friend. Don't at me. Yeah, that's fair enough. Okay, so the Sangweep line are based on empathy, distress, and revenge, and different orifices that blood can come from. I actually didn't learn about the horned lizard until after I designed these mons. Darkling and Signero could have been dark water if the duckling in the story that inspired them had been swimming around in a pond instead of a corpse, and if that black swan I tried to feed when I was five had just taken the bread instead of biting my hand like a f***ing asshole. And Suffoconda, it was suggested by Radbat, should also be blood type. And since it attacks by crushing, swallowing, and regurgitating the opponent, I think they had a point. And finally, there's Placky and Screechan. I've saved them for last because they aren't long for the Cotayan region. They got the most votes, so they are about to be redesigned and replaced in my next video. So if you want to see more blood types, stick around, hit the sub button, and let me know your ideas in the comment section. Oh, and I'm going to do the full type chart in a separate video once all the new types have been discussed. Now's the time to give me your recommendations for what should be good against what and whatnot. I just said too many what's. Until next time, my name is Neckpunch. Have a good one. <laughs>